Good morning, church, and welcome to the bridge. Come on, stand to your feet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, come on, give him a hand of praise. You know the 107 number of songs said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of of the enemy. I don't know about you, but the enemy would have us not assemble in the house of the Lord today. The enemy will have us not give God the praise, but I don't know about you. I'm going to defeat the enemy and give God a praise anyhow. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord because everything that have breath will praise the Lord. I have breath, so I will praise the Lord. Come on, join with me and praise the Lord.
worship, period. By giving praise to God. Lifting up our voice and singing praises unto Him. We start at this worship period to say, Lord, we praise you, we magnify you, we honor you. I've heard it of old that they said that when the praises go up, blessings will come down. And I believe that is true. For that only simply says that God inhabits the praises of his people. You see, when we praise God, when we lift him up, when we magnify him, when we glorify him, when we honor him, we get his attention. We let him know that it is in you, Lord, that we live, we move, and we have our being. In other words, what we are simply saying is, Lord, we can't do nothing without you. We can't breathe without you. We can't walk without you. We can't talk without you. We can't live without you. We are nothing without you. We are nothing without you. And because we are nothing without you, we can't help but give you praise. We can't help but to lift you up, to magnify you. Yes, we praise and we worship and we magnify the Lord. We lift him up. We let him know that we are nothing without him. How many of you here will agree with me that you are nothing without him? We can do nothing without the hand of God. We can't do nothing without you, Lord. So what we are simply saying is, what we are trying to say is that, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need thee. I need thee every hour, every minute of the day. Lord, I need you. Do you have a need in your life? Do you have something that you need from the Lord? Lift up your hands and give him praise. Honor him and magnify him. Tell him, Lord, I need you. I need you. Lord God, we come in your presence. We acknowledge your presence today. Lord, we come simply to say that we need you. We can't make it without you. We need you in our lives today. We need you in everything that we do. We need you in our walk. We need you in our family. We need you in our children. We need you in our finances. We need you, oh God, we need you right now. God bless us today. Bless us today, oh God. We worship you, we magnify you, we honor you. Lord, it is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. Everything that we are, everything that we have, everything that we know, everything that we do, it is because of you. And so, Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We thank you, O oh God, for hearing our supplication. We thank you, O oh God, for receiving our prayer and our praise. Now, Lord, you know all about us, so bless us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet.
And through it all, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. For you're worthy to be praised. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Come on. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt him. Now tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Bless the Lord. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, if you're claiming the victory of the Lord, give him praise. Give him praise. The psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Lift him up. Magnify him. We thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you. Come on, come on, come on. Give our praise team a hand. Give our praise team a blessing. Bless you. Bless you. Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see each and every one of you today. Give yourselves a hand of praise for being here. God bless you. We're just going to take just a few minutes out of our worship and praise service. We love this part of the service. We, we think that this is a very vital part of our worship experience, and that is to be able to go around and greet one another, to show love to one another, to connect with one another. And we're always excited and glad to have those that have decided to join us for worship and praise. If you are here today, for your very first time, if you're here today for your very first time, just simply raise your hand. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to acknowledge you. We want to make sure that we go around. Welcome, welcome. We want to make sure that we go around and show you love. Welcome. Thank you for coming. At this time, we're going to ask that everyone, if you would, get out of your seats. All right, bless your sister. Do we have any more? Let me take one yeah, I think, okay, way, way better. All right, we're not going to have you, we're not going to, you don't have to say anything. All right, over here, we just want to acknowledge you. We just want to say hello. We love you. Welcome. Thank you. At this time, come on, let us go around and greet one another, then we'll come back and continue in our worship and praise.
tonight if you can make your way back to your seats. you had an opportunity to go around and greet one another and to greet our first time worshiper, our first time guest. Amen. I think I, I think I got a chance to go around and greet all of our first time Oh, I think I might have missed one. Yeah, I see your brother back there. All right, what is your name? Marquise. Marquise. Now, see, I went around, and that was about four or five or six individuals that I met, and there, and they all told me their name, and I could not, I cannot, I will not even attempt to give their name. But I know Brother Marquise. Amen. Glad to have you, Brother Marquise. Amen. Now, all of the other ones <laughs> that uh, I met, and they are my brothers and my sisters. Glad to have you worship with us today. <laughs> Amen. All right, as you think of your schedule this week, we're always looking for those who will partner with us in fasting and prayer. Who will join us on Monday? Who will join us fasting on Monday? Amen. Thank you. How about Tuesday? Amen. Thank you. And then Wednesday? We're joining Wednesday. All right. Thank you. And Thursday? We're joining. All right. Thank you. And then Friday? Who will join us in fasting and prayer on Friday? Oh, wait a minute. Friday? Who would? Fr oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. And then on Saturday? Who would join us this Saturday? In fact, it's not Legends. So we're looking for those. Amen. Thank you. And then on next Sunday, who will join us in fasting and prayer. Amen. Well, we thank God that he will touch the hearts of someone, and we will have someone that will be fasting and praying with us throughout the week for the needs of this congregation and all the needs. Uh, don't forget the Wednesday Night Live this Wednesday and every Wednesday at 7 o'clock on Facebook. Amen. It's just our time in the middle of the week to come together and connect with one another. So at this time, come on, let us receive our pastor. Hey, everybody. Hey, man. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. It's an honor to have you uh, with us in the house of the Lord. Is God good or what? Amen. Hey, man. And his mercy endures forever and forever. Amen. Let me just mention uh, two things before we receive our offering this morning. Uh, next Sunday, be sure to be with us. It's going to be a special day. Uh, we're going to have some special guests with us. Uh, Josh and Danny Sousa are going to be here, and they are the full-time missionaries downtown at Chi Alpha, the IU Indy campus. And as you know, we're involved with Chi Alpha really all over the entire state, really around the world because we're supportive of them, and they have campus ministry around the world and they're going to be with us. They're an exciting couple. They're going to share with us what's happening right here in our city. As you know, we're involved in Bloomington and Evansville and, and Terre Haute and Purdue and Ball State, all of them around the state of Indiana, but especially right here in Indianapolis, we need to be supportive of that. And matter of fact, I've got some family that's graduates of uh, what used to be IUPUI. Now they call it IU Indy. I don't know all the structural changes. I don't know all the reason behind it, but I know that's a fact. So... Uh, be sure to be with us next Sunday. Josh and Danny Sousa is going to be a great uh, time in the house of the Lord. Also, let me jump ahead a little bit. I think three weeks from today, uh, on the first Sunday of May, uh, evangelist or missionary evangelist, uh, Mark Perky is going to be with us. So be sure, if you would, to mark it on your calendar and be here with us on that day. He's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I know that he always leaves a word with us. So be sure, if you would, to be here. Amen. Ushers, would you come? It's time to pay our tithe and give our offering this morning. If you're ready to worship him, let's give together. Amen. Say this with me. Matter of fact, get your tithe envelope in your hand or your, your pocketbook or your wallet or your purse or something that represents your finances. I know some of you are going to give on Givelify. Some of you are going to give on PayPal. Some of you are going to give Cash App. But I want you, if you would, to agree together with me and 
say this. Let's make this declaration today. Everybody say it out loud after me. Say, Lord, I bring my tithe and offering to you this morning as an act of worship to you. And I believe that you will pour out a blessing on my life that will provide seed for me to sow even more. I stand on your word in faith. Father, receive our gifts today as we come before you to worship you now. Lord, we've sung with all that's within us. Lord, we've clapped our hands. We've shouted unto God with the voice of triumph, Lord. We've magnified and glorified your name, Lord, in different ways. But, Father, now we pay our tithe and give our offering, Lord, and that is worship. We believe that giving is worship and worship is giving. So, Lord, we come before you now believing, believing, Lord God, as we give unto you, Lord, you will indeed provide more seed. You provide seed to the sower, Lord. We believe that today in faith, Lord. We receive it now, Lord. Receive our gifts as we give out of faith. We give out of obedience, Lord. We give us unto you. We give in unity today. But Lord, I pray also that you rebuke the devour on our behalf. I pray you open the windows of heaven, Lord, upon every household of faith. And I pray, Lord God, that each one of us now will experience the bountiful blessing of God as we're faithful to you, Lord. You can't bless what you ain't got. So, Lord, we're here today, Lord, to give, Lord, and to give unto you with all that's within us now, Lord. Receive our gifts now as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Thank you for your giving. We appreciate your faithfulness so very, very much. Amen. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to just say that it's right now just a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be serving the Lord. It's a great time to be a part of the body of Christ. It's a great time to be a part of the bridge. We've got some exciting things that are happening. Uh, we shared some of those last week. Yesterday was a busy day around here. We had uh, ministry meetings going on at 10 o'clock, and then we had legends yesterday at noon. Then we had more uh, ministry meetings at 2.30. So I'm just saying it was a busy day, and uh, today uh, is a great day in the house of the Lord. And let, let me just say that last Sunday was a special day because we took time in the service uh, to be able to kind of just uh, set in motion some things, kind of a restart a little bit, if you will, uh, and they're doing it right now. I just stuck my head back there in their fellowship time, and uh, Miss Jessie and uh, Camden are back there, and at the same time, there's Danina is in there and uh, Lindsay, and so we have a new team that's just there to minister and to bless our kids, and of course, Miss Tammy and Megan are there, so we have bridge babies for the nursery, and then we have bridge kids uh, for those up through uh, the fifth grade, and so they're being ministered to right now. You remember, don't we always remember that, that while you and I are in here worshiping, and lifting up the name of the Lord and hearing the word of God together, that there's other people out there ministering to our children and to our kids, and that's a blessing. And so we're grateful for that. Continue always to pray for them if you would. And then also last week, uh, we uh, presented our life group ministry, and uh, we brought our lay pastors before you, introduced you to all of them. We laid hands upon them, and we prayed over them, and we kind of set that ministry in motion. If you were not here you, you missed out. It was an exciting time as we had uh, 16 folks up here that we prayed for and laid hands upon. And then afterwards, after service, people stayed around. And uh, we had some fried chicken and we had, uh, uh, let's see, potato salad. We, uh, it, it, we had some good stuff. We had a good lunch together. But we also had the time for all of us to sign up in different life groups. And uh, so that all took place. And then met with the lay pastors yesterday. So if you weren't here, 
You need to be a part of a life group. Everybody that calls this their church home needs to be involved in a life group. You need to sign up today. You can go back by the information table out there. Uh, Ms. Francis will have it there. And all you need to do is just give us your name and your address and your phone number, and we will contact you this week uh, with the, the home that's closest to you. If you have a group you'd like to be in, you can make a note of that. But if you don't know one, don't worry about it. We'll get you in the one closest to you. And uh, so if you have not yet, you weren't here last Sunday, Please go by before you leave today and sign up. Uh, the, the life groups begin on May the 5th. Uh, it meets every other Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, that will be in May, June, and July. And then we'll take the month of August off. And then we'll begin in September again every other Sunday night for September, October, November. Then we're off the month of December. And then we'll start up again in January in 2025 and uh, do the same thing every other Sunday night for three months and then off a month. And so that's the schedule of it. If you didn't sign up, if you weren't here last week, you need to sign up. And all of you that did sign up, your lay pastors will be contacting you, reaching out to you and making sure that uh, they get connected with you and get you all ready uh, for life group ministry. Can you say amen? amen? It's a great time. Now, today we have one more piece of the puzzle that we need to put together. And that is, again, yesterday was amazing. We ministered to our seniors. I just mentioned to you about bridge babies and bridge kids. Then I just talked about all the church body, the general church body with life groups. But the one group that we need to focus on today and kind of a refresh, push the refresh button or press the the restart button, and that's going to happen on the 28th. I'll say more about that in a moment. But I want to take this time and introduce the folks that are our our youth, AXIS, A-X-I-S, AXIS Youth Ministry, um, Ministry Team. I want uh, Tim to come, Tim Hoffman, if he would. He's been faithful in ministry to our youth group. Bobby Gammon, Bobby, there's Bobby, come on. These two have been faithful to minister to our uh, youth group. They're going to continue, and we're grateful for that. And, uh, and then with the uh, ladies, where, where is, I need uh, Mackenzie and Marcella. Marcella Jackson and Mackenzie Jackson are also going to be part of our youth ministry team. And the people that are going to be heading it up, I'd like for John and Barbie Rincones to come. And they are going to be heading up our AXIS youth ministry. This team met yesterday. They've been communicating together. Uh, It's going to be a great time. So I want them to come forward if they would. And these six here are going to be ministering. This is going to be the sixth grade up through high school. So the sixth grade through the 12th grade, uh, this is our team that's going to be ministering. Let let me just say a a couple, three things very quickly here. Uh, But by the way, we're not meeting today or next Sunday, but we're going to start on the 28th, on the 28th. Now, we've always met normally from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoons. They're going to change that time to 2 o'clock to four o'clock. That way, because it's kind of like in between time. People would go eat lunch or go home, whatever, and then had to wait around for three o'clock. So at two o'clock, people can go grab lunch and then come back, and youth ministry will happen right then at two o'clock. So normally it'd be two o'clock to four o'clock on every single Sunday afternoon. But on the 28th, the kickoff, and I mean, it's going to be a welcome back party, is my understanding. It's going to be a welcome back. <coughs> there you go, welcome back party uh, from two to five o'clock. Uh, so it's going to be an extra hour long, and that's important because they're going to be all outdoors. Am I right, John? It's going to be all outside. That's the plan. It's going to be a party. They're going to have music kicking and going, and they're going to have uh, prizes, and they're going to have food, and it's just going to be a great welcome home party, and then they're going to kick it off and go from there. Now, am I right, John, that, that the first half hour, parents, we'd like for you to come. We'd like for you to come the first half hour. After that, you're going to, have to, you're going to need to leave going to get a little wild. No, it's not going to get wild. But, but they just want you to know if you're bringing your kids or you're here to drop off, if you want to come and meet them or you want to come and talk with them, you want to come and, and just uh, get to see them face to face, that's fine. Or ask any questions. They want to make sure they're available for that. So if you would do that. But if you're going to do it, uh, uh, don't come and stay. You, your kids don't want you to come and stay. So I'm just saying, but come if you'd like to and uh, meet the team here and uh, just kind of ask them any questions you want or anything at all. And uh, if you don't need to do that, that's fine. Don't feel obligated. But if you want to, you're welcome to do that. Amen. What I want to do, would you all just all step forward just a little bit so we got room in front of you and behind you. 
I want the youth that are here, I want them to come, and I want the parents of the youth that are here to come, and I want anybody else that wants to to come, and uh, we're going to just uh, get ready to pray for them. But as they come, and if, let, me, let me just share with you five quick things that I believe are important for an amazing, successful youth ministry. Uh, these are things I just randomly kind of put down and jotted down a little bit ago, but I want to offer this to our young people. Advocacy. Now, that's a big word nobody uses much, but advocacy means that we are standing on their behalf. We believe in them. We offer to them that they are uh, somebody that, that, that they can count on us, that they're not just part of, but they are front and center, part of everything that goes on in our church, and they're vital to us. They have our support. They have our backing. They have our love. We also want to offer to them community. They, one thing I love as many times you're in worship, many times during prayer. If one of our young people come down for prayer, all of them come down. I mean, they stand in agreement. There's a, a network. There's a community there between them that we are grateful for. And uh, so I believe in advocacy. I believe in community. Another thing is discipleship. Obviously, we want to continue to train. We want to continue to instill in them biblical principles, godly principles. And so we want to share all that with them. But then also we want to teach them to serve, not just to take in, but to serve. To serve our community, to serve our church, to serve others. And so the last thing is leadership, which we've just introduced to you. So before we have prayer, I, 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 I know he's not a big, big talker, but uh, John, I'm going to hand the microphone to you. If you've got anything you want to say, feel free to say it, bud. All right. Um, we are very, very thrilled to be doing this. We met yesterday. It was supposed to be a one-hour meeting. It ended up being over two hours, but it was great. Um, a lot of great things are going to happen. I think you guys are going to have a great time. Um, there's going to be great prizes on the 28th. Um, it's just going to be fun. And if it rains, we're still going to have fun out there. Um, <laughs> bring your friends. Uh, that's the most important thing. Bring your friends. Um, if you if you know anyone that's not here, this, well, we're, we're going to reach out to you guys. If you're watching online, we're going to get you guys here. And we're hoping for a great time. So thanks. Yeah. Camp is right around the corner. Camp is in June. All the parents need to hear us on that. All the kids need to hear on that. We normally take 15 to 20 or more uh, to camp every year. And so you need to know that's coming up. And also, let me say, one of the prizes we're giving away on that day, the 28th, is we're going to be giving away a free uh, camp registration enrollment. That's about 230 bucks or whatever it is. So I'm just telling you, we're not messing around. We're going to give good prizes. Uh, what are those things called? Earbuds, pods, bods, what? Air, air pods. Okay. I've called them earbuds and got corrected before. I don't know why. I, I know the difference. But we're going to give away those. I'm saying it's going to be some good prizes, all right? Uh, some gift cards, etc. You don't want to miss out on the 28th. All of our young people uh, need to plan to be a part of it. Amen. Would you stand with us all across this room? Pastor Sloan, would you come and anoint these that are down there as I lead us in prayer together we love y'all we appreciate your commitment can I say this again Bobby and and Tim have been faithful and been ministering uh, for I don't know how long but quite some time they know the boys and they know the girls and they're part of their life John uh, also ministered for quite some time uh, and then stepped away when his son graduated and went up to college and things and so just a few weeks back stepped away but now uh, when, didn't hesitate. When we talked to Marcella, when we talked to Mackenzie, we talked to John and Barbie, they did not hesitate to say absolutely they would give up their time. They would give their Sunday afternoons. They would give it a lot more than that. They've got activities planned, great things in store, and they made the commitment without hesitation. And I'm grateful for that today. I want you, if you would, to stretch your hand forward. Pastor Sloan is going to anoint these before us. So let's pray together. Father, we stand before you today, Lord, thankful for those that serve. Thankful, Lord, because they don't have to. They don't get paid to. They weren't uh, manipulated. They weren't coerced, Lord, of their own free will, Lord. They have a passion. They have a heart for our young people. They have a heart, Lord God, for the, for the sixth graders through high school, Lord. Uh, uh, not an easy age, but, Lord, a, a very rewarding age to minister. So, Father, I pray, God, that you give anointing upon them now. We anoint them, Lord. I pray for strength upon them. I pray, Lord God, for patience upon them. I pray, Lord God, for wisdom. 
I pray for knowledge, Lord. I pray, God, that you will anoint them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord. I pray from the inside out, God, that you'll give them the unction of the Holy One, the minister, Lord, as they need to now, Lord. I pray for our young people. I pray for Access Youth Ministry, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll do an absolute supernatural uh, impartation, Lord, into their hearts and their lives as they go into the world, Lord. Let them be stronger. Let them be better. Let them be more prepared, Lord, because of Access Youth Ministry, because of the leadership that stand before us today, Lord, that give of themselves, that pour into their heart. Let them be the advocates we talked about, Lord. Let them be, Lord, those that help to disciple them now, Lord. Let them be the ones that always pour in, Lord, and teach them to not only receive, but also to give out, to serve, Lord. Father, I pray now that you will just melt their hearts together. Let it begin right here, right now. Let every parent here let every parent that will have a child in the years to come, Lord, that will be a part of Access Youth Ministry, let them give their un absolute, total, complete support, Lord, to those that lead and minister and help to support what the parents are doing at home, Lord. I pray your anointing now. God, I pray that when the devil comes in to discourage, when the devil comes in to try to tear apart, Lord, that they will absolutely know, God, you've already gone before them and let the anointing that rests upon them today, Lord, not just be here on a Sunday morning service, but Lord, let it rest upon them every Sunday afternoon from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, Lord. I pray, God, that they'll be there, Lord, that anointing will rest upon them, Lord, to give them wisdom, Lord, as they counsel and they share, Lord, and they pour into the hearts of our young people. Father, we believe today as we set apart these leaders today. I pray that you'd set apart our young people. I pray, God, you'd set them apart from the world. Let, let, let the devil, no matter how he might try to steal, he might try to come in and to tear them apart. Lord, I pray that he'll be defeated in every one of their lives, Lord, because of the bond of the parents, because of the leaders that are here, and the young people themselves, Lord. We put a covering and a blessing and an anointing now, Lord God, upon Axis Youth Ministry now. I pray, God, that you will absolutely, as they renew, restart, refresh, God, do a supernatural work now in Jesus' name. And everybody said together with me, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you to the team. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. We appreciate it, and we will continue to pray. Mark it down as you fast and pray. Mark it down as you pray that you will continue to pray and to believe and to stand in the gap for them. Amen. Can you imagine? How many of you here? By saying amen, ever raised a teenager, say amen. amen. All six of these people that stood up here don't have any teenagers that will be in that group. That, you think, I mean, excuse me, they didn't have to do this is my point. Now, if you'd have known when you gave birth to those kids how they was going to act when they was 12 or 13, you might have thought about it back in the day, right? Well, they know what they're walking into. They understand that, but I'm going to tell you what, I appreciate the fact that they're committed to our young people. And, uh, again, they don't have to do it, but they're glad to do it. And the same is true. I mean, you go back there right now, uh, Camden and, and Jesse, th th those aren't, they don't have any children in there. If you go back there right now, you're going to find Danina. She don't have any children back there. Lindsay, no children back there. I, I, I'm just saying these are people that love your kids, love our kids, love our young people, and give themselves for that. I think there's got to be a place in heaven that God is going to bless in a special way for all of them. Amen. Let me just say this. I, you know, I get tired of Hallmark greeting cards dictating our lives. That's behind all these holidays. Don't you kid yourself at all. Hallmark greeting cards are behind all the stinking holidays. They're a holiday every day of the year because they want to sell you a card for it. I just missed sibling week or sibling day. It was this week somewhere. And I know my brother enough and I know my sister enough. If I'd have said something online, they'd have been mad at me. You know why they've been mad at me? Because they'd have felt like they now got to say something online. <laughs> so, so we just all silently agree. I know them. It's just don't go there. I'm just telling you, I love them. They love, I, every day's a holiday. And then we move on to the next one. Well, I, I got news for it. What if I'm not done with the last one? I'm going someplace this morning. The world tells us that we're done with Easter. Well, I ain't done with Easter. I wasn't done two weeks ago on the 31st of March. 
That's over. The next day, April 1st, they, you know, that's over. And wait till next year. How many of you, and I've told you this before, but I just need to make sure I'm concerned about your health. How many of you noticed on April 1st you were extremely, extremely tired? Extremely, more than normal. If you think back, you were. You were. I promise you were. And I know why. And I've told you this before. You forget it sometimes. You just finished a 31-day march. So, of course you were tired. It stands to reason. But you keep forgetting it every year, so I'm here to remind you every year. But I'm telling you, all their cards are done till next year. Everything about Easter is done till. But yeah, I got news for you. I love the buildup. I love all that leads up to it. But who says that I'm done the day after Easter with the, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus? I'm not. Now, last week we had a lot of things going on. We had the presentations we talked about. And, and I, I thought, well, maybe I'll be all right after that. Well, you know what? I wasn't all right after that. I'm going to read from John chapter 20. I'm just not done with Easter yet, so you can say what you want to, but that's what I'm saying right now. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the other at the, other at the foot. Then asked her, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they've put him. Verse 14, it says, and at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know, didn't realize it was Jesus. So he asked her, now, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Now, Mary, thinking he was the gardener, she says, sir, if you have carried him away, just tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Well, that's a moment right there. She thinks it's the gardener. She doesn't recognize him. And he says, Mary. She immediately turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. So now she knows who she's talking to. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I told you, I, I, I know it's not Easter, but it ought to be all the time. I want to say to the praise team, feel free to sing Easter songs anytime you want. You don't have to wait till Easter time. I, I just, I'm, I'm not, I told you, I'm just kind of fed up with Hallmark. They don't run my life. They're not the boss of me. Listen to me now. I regret this morning to have to look you in the eyes and inform you today that I don't have any new news. I don't. I'm sorry. But I do have some good news. Some amazingly great news. In this chapter of John, we find uh, words that are powerful and precious. Good news. The, the, the good news that is what I'm going to call priceless. That's the title of my message, priceless. Think for a moment about things that are truly priceless in your life. And reminisce for a moment, if you would. Just, just go back and, and think about it. Re reminisce with me about the time that you had children in your house. Now the grandchildren have taken their place. When the kids leave our house after they've been with us, whether it be for a holiday or just visiting or whatever, I can normally look around because after the kids are gone and the young, we got little, little grandbabies, but an empty milk carton 
represents about two ninety nine or three forty nine, whatever you can get the price for. An empty gallon of Bluebell ice cream is about four ninety nine. An empty car gas tank, fifty, sixty bucks, depending on the price. It changes from moment by moment. An empty nest, thousands of dollars have been saved. But an empty tomb is priceless. Baby's first words back in my day, buck ninety nine for a cassette tape. Daughter's first date cost me like 10, 12 bucks for a, a ticket at a movie not too far behind them. <laughs> Don't put it past me, trust me. <laughs> First prom, good grief, who knows what now. Well, those, I'm glad those days have come and gone. 150, 250, 350, I don't know what. Yeah, it, it, unbelievable. First Resurrection Sunday, priceless. John does not mention the other women that went with Mary Magdalene, but her only, because she was the most active in the business of the day. And in her appeared the most unbelievable passion, that a passion that was kindled by the great things that Jesus had done for her. Folks, it ought, it, it, it's good to be active. It's good to view in, in light of all that the Lord has done for us, our activity should be absolutely, I mean, it, it ought to be a constant thing in our life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, to proclaim and tell of the good news that God has done for us. Let me just tell you that what God has done for me is priceless. What God has done for you is priceless. Obviously, you recognize the phrase priceless. Since 1998, MasterCard has uh, sponsored a variety of priceless commercials. Each an ad would begin with a list of services, of things that, that you know, and, and a price tag that matches it, you know, whatever it might have been, to buy a kid's uh, ball glove, X amount of money, to buy a kid's uniform, X amount of money, and then, you know, the time spent with the kid, you know, priceless. That's kind of how they would always end with an expression of followed by this, there are some things, after they said priceless, they would say there are some things that money just can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Well, I do agree with them. There are some things money can't buy. But I submit today for everything else, I don't suggest MasterCard. I suggest the master. For everything else, there's Jesus. There are some things this world cannot buy, cannot afford, but for everything else, don't look to MasterCard, look to the master. There are some things and experiences in life that no amount of money can ever compensate you for. There are some things master, MasterCard cannot purchase. MasterCard cannot purchase your salvation. MasterCard cannot purchase and wash your sins away. MasterCard cannot make you whole again, but the Master can. Some things are precious. Some things are priceless. Easter season that happened basically a build up a little bit commercial wise and then all of a sudden March 31st comes and goes and it's over. Let me tell you what, Easter season is priceless. It provides a satisfaction so intense that it almost hurts. We try to sing it. We try to uh, dramatize it. We, we try to preach about it. We try to do so much, but you can't ever express just how strongly you feel about the resurrected Savior, the fact that the tomb is empty. It is an absolute priceless moment in your life. It provides a satisfaction you can't hardly describe to anybody. Easter is not an empty fact. It is an eternal fact. The message of Easter is that that is not all. We're not done yet. We're not finished yet. Easter tells us there's a part two. Easter says there's a sequel that's coming. Uh, our our short-lived sorrow that we may experience from time to time is about to be washed away. Easter reminds us that it's not over until it's over. It's not over until God puts his final stamp on it. Easter is the day that the tomb shouted, Glory! 
It normally was doom and gloom and blah, blah, blah. But that day, the tomb shouted glory. Easter matches victory from the grave. It snatches it out of the grave, and it pulls the, the plug on death. As I preached on that Easter Sunday, Easter is the day that death died. Somebody ought to get excited about that. It died. Listen to me. You have a choice in this world. You can be born once and die twice. Or you can be born twice and only die once because of the day that death died, because of Easter, because of the resurrection. Easter is joy being birthed out of your pain. It is the delightful dawn that follows your tear-drenched night of weeping. Easter is when you discover that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But let me tell you this morning, your weeping must not and cannot ever hinder your seeking. You may be weeping. You may be hurting. You may be crying. You may be suffering loss. You may go through all kinds, but you must never stop seeking. It did not keep Mary from seeking. I have a quartet of reasons why Easter is priceless today. Anybody interested? Inquiring minds want to know this morning. Listen to me. First of all, remembering is priceless. Peter said, I've come to stir up your pure minds by remembrance. Can I tell you, that's what preaching is all about. I'm all for revelation. I'm all for a new thing. That's fine and good. But then Peter said, I don't need to give you a new thing. I need to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Can I tell you today, remembering is priceless. Anybody here ever had a family member close to you that dealt with cognitive issues, dementia, Alzheimer? Anybody here ever? Dealt with that? As you know, I, my dad is in that time right now. Can I just tell you? Remembering is priceless. See, I can't talk to my dad about anything of the past. He's married to my mom for half a century. He doesn't know she existed. He wouldn't have any idea anything I would talk about. I'm not sure he knows who I am. Uh, just not sure. He's pretty good faking things he's pretty good about whatever you know but he uh the last time we were there my wife and I just sat out there in the lobby and, and he came down the hallway with my brother and he kind of came around the corner and we're just sitting there we're only two there and he goes hey I know you we don't know if he did or not, but it made us feel like a million bucks about that. Now, he didn't call no names, and he didn't say, that's my son. But it didn't matter. It's good enough for me, all right? He just recognizes us. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just saying to you, remembering is priceless. Priceless. When you don't see it, when it's not there, then all of a sudden, you'll know what I'm talking about. Today, you need to remember that we are more than conquerors. You need to be reminded today that you're a child of the king. Remember today that you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Remember the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Remember no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Don't be discouraged that it, that it formed. It's going to form, but it will not prosper. Remember he said he would never leave us, never forsake us. Remember he said he would be with us. He's in our midst right now. He's here. You ever study that in our midst? In our midst. Just do a little bit of studying on it. Daniel, the third chapter, verse 25. You remember the story there. You know what's going on there. You know that the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to worship the golden image, which King Nebuchadnezzar set up, and they said, we won't do it. We'd rather burn than bow. We're not going to bow down. Not going to do it. So they tied them up, bound them up, turned the fire up hotter, threw them in there. Now they look in there, and they say, didn't we throw three men in that fire? And they said, Yes. Three men. They said, yeah, but I, I see a fourth. And it says, and he, and he looks like the, the son of God. The scripture absolutely says that we threw. He says, he's walking in the midst of the fire. Those words, in the midst of them. And they have no hurt. And the form is like that of the son of God. Luke 2, 46. He began his conscious journey to the cross then. And it says he was in the midst of 
the doctors in the midst of. But it says that it came to pass after three days that they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of not, not so much physical doctors, but the geniuses, the, the scholars, the, the doctors there, both hearing them and asking them questions. And there, remember, on the cross, that, that, that on Easter Sunday, that resurrection day, that on Good Friday, he hangs on the cross, and the Bible says now he's in the midst of two malefactors. In our text, John 20, it says we see him now in the midst. It's in your text. In the midst of the disciples in the upper room on the resurrection side of the grave. And in Revelation 1, 11, in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, he stands. Revelation 4, 6, he's in the midst of the throne in glory. And even now, whatever blood-bought, if ever, any time blood-bought believers get together on a Sunday morning, any time, it don't matter where you're at, Bible-toting believers, he is there in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in his, my name, he says, I am in the midst of of them there's no doubt today that remembering is priceless but i got news for you not only remembering but redemption is priceless what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul the scripture says what shall a man give in exchange for his soul in exchange you know what all of us were lost but we were redeemed. We were bought back. We all wavered, but we were bought back. We all did our own thing for a while, but we were bought back. We have all, just like Samson, let our hair down. But we've been, and we've been sapped of our spiritual strength, but we've been rescued. We've been redeemed. We've been bought back by the goodness and by the grace of God. We have been redeemed and bought back by the precious blood of the lamb today remembering is priceless redemption is priceless reassurance is priceless when my wife asks me she says do you love me she's not looking for information she's looking for confirmation she's looking for reassurance y'all know every time I see you see what I say I love you you already know that I'm just reassuring you. I just want you to know, Mike, and then when I say, you already do that. But we do it all the time. Uh, my daughter back here, we, we, we don't, we, we, she can call me about some stupid, dumb thing, or I can call her about something that irritates her. But when we're done, we say, I love you. It's reassurance. It's priceless, folks. You don't think it's priceless? Let one of your kids walk through the room and you say, I love you. And they just keep on walking. You go, hey, hey, hey. I said, I love you. Oh, I love you too, Dad. Reassurance, folks, is priceless. The old song, the old melody, the old, the old song book, page 44. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Folks, never doubt in the storm what God told you in the calm. If God said it, believe it. If the Holy Spirit inspired it, accept it. Through all my experiences, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. And if I, listen to me, he says very clearly, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. He will draw all men up because he has been Lifted up. Can I tell you? And I don't mind it. I don't get out of whack about it. I don't get all holy and scholarly on people, whatever it is. But we always talk about lift him up, lift him up. You know, we sing that if I be lifted up. But that's not what that verse is even talking about. Verse says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And we think, boy, if we praise him, we shout unto God. We praise him that he'll draw all men. Oh, no, no, no. What it means is I be lifted up. If I be lifted up on the cross. Go back and do your homework. He said, if I be lifted up on the cross, I would draw all men. I would draw all men unto me. Well, I got news for you. He's been lifted up, and he's going to draw all men to himself. But Jesus, the giver of life, lay dead. Jesus, the fairest of 10,000, died. Committed to it with every fiber in his body, he died. With all of his mind and his heart, he died. Listen to me. He died. When he died, though, he strangled hope 
And when he died, the sun refused to sign. We just had that, what was it, Monday? The eclipse, that was an amazing thing. Let me tell you something. On the day that Jesus died, it wasn't no eclipse. It wasn't just a natural thing. I'm telling you what, it was a God thing. The sun refused to shine. He died on a hill called Mount Calvary. And when he died, Jesus lifted his head, his blood-soaked head, and cried, It is finished. And then in the wake of this event, in the wake of the crucifixion, becomes the reality of my fourth priceless thing today, and that is the resurrection. Priceless. Priceless. I, I, I want to just take a moment this morning. Your Bible talks about there's, there's steps and there's phases and, and, and there's things. It talks about when the tomb was empty. And it says in his, after they, they came, and his grave clothes were found. They remained. Now, stay with me on this this morning. Remember Lazarus? When Lazarus was raised from the dead, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. He laid in the grave for four days, and he came forth. What's the Bible say? He says he came forth with his grave clothes on because he was going to use them again. Not today, <laughs> but he would use them again. But Christ, rising to an immortal life, came out free of the grave clothes. They were folded, listen to me, and they were left because he rose to die no more. Lazarus came forth with his grave clothes on. He was going to need them again someday. But Jesus came forth with no grave clothes because he rose to die never, ever again. Can somebody say amen this morning? All four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Say, late on the Sabbath as he began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Mark says, very early on the first day of the week. Luke says, on the first day of the week at early dawn. John says, now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb. This morning, I want you, if you would, for just a moment, look with me in the eyes of Mary. Early on that, month, that, that morning, she comes with, and just picture Mary. You know the story of Mary. I don't have time to go through it all, but, but my goodness, I'm just telling you, you, you you know what God did for her. You know what the Lord did for her. Just look in her eyes with me for a moment this morning. No doubt the depth of her despair would boggle our minds today. The only one that ever cared for her. The only one that didn't judge her. The only one that loved her, truly. The only one that didn't look down on her. The only one that didn't cast her aside. She was demon-possessed. Listen to me. She had a whole lot of demons in her. But Jesus didn't care. Can you imagine? She's thinking, now he's gone. I'm back. I got no more. Where, where am I at now? Her present state found her desperately needing to get a hold of herself. But he, she was unable to seem to get the handle on things. The scripture talks about her tears and, and, and her need found expression through her tears. As you look with me today in Mary's eyes, you're going to see them filled with tears. After all that she had been through with Jesus, nobody but Jesus could comprehend the depth of her feelings for him. I don't want to get into your business this morning, but let me just tell you, as you look at Mary, or you look at me, or you look at whatever, listen to me, you don't know. You don't know what Mary felt. You weren't there. You don't know when because you weren't there. Folks, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Huh? Remember the fellow I told you about years ago? Big old boy sitting there at Cracker Barrel and he's eating biscuit after biscuit after biscuit after biscuit after biscuit after biscuit. The lady sitting next to him is going, after a while she can't. She speaks up. I can't, I've never seen anybody with any less discipline than you. He says, lady, you don't know how many biscuits I wanted to eat. Don't judge me. You don't know. You don't know. 
You don't have any idea. You don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through. We don't know what Mary went through. You don't know what God has done for anybody. You don't know how many times he had delivered her. You don't know how what he had wrought in poor Mary's life. You don't know how many deliverances had come through there. You don't know how many times that he had been her knight in shining armor. You know how many times that, that he, he had been the doctor in her sick room for her. You know how many times that she had almost lost her mind, but he gave her the peace that passes all understanding. You don't know how many times her pillow was wet with tears all night long, and he came by and he wiped her tears with his own hair. I tell you, you don't know today. You don't know. But can I tell you what I do know today? God will step in. God will step in. Listen to me now. Won't he? Has he done? I mean, I ask you, won't he step in? When trouble's in your way, won't he step in? When you're down and to your last dime, ever somebody say last dime. Won't he step in? Has he ever done it for you? You ever been there? When friends walk out on you, won't he step in? When they walk out the front, listen to me, when they walk out the back door, won't he walk in the front door? I'm asking you, won't he step in? When the doctor walks away from your bedside and shakes your head, won't he step in there? Is there anybody here who knows that God will step in? The Bible says Mary asked him, where have you laid him? And before they could answer, Jesus stepped in. Are you listening to me? She's there distraught. She's got all kinds of stuff going through her mind. And she says, just tell me. Tell me, angels. Tell me somebody. Where have you laid? But before they could ever answer, Jesus stepped in and said, Mary. Mary. Hear me today. He'll step in. I'm telling you right now. Won't he step in? The Bible tells you that she asked and he stepped in. Won't he step in? Before your mama does, before your pastor does, before your friend does, won't he step in? Just when you need him most, won't he step in? Just when your birds are short enough more than what you can handle, won't he step in? Just when you're down and almost out, won't he step in? Keep looking at Mary with me this morning. I'm almost done. Here's Mary complaining that she can't see a dead body, but she was privileged to see him alive. Won't he step in? Hear me. You know what that is? We call that priceless. Priceless. Look at Mary again, saturated in tears, and Jesus wiping her tears away. That's priceless this morning. Look at Mary in dialogue with angels, but she found out just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. That's priceless. Look at Mary depressed and, and distressed over what, what, what she had wanted, and, and, but she found out just as a, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. That is is priceless. Somebody ought to see Mary this morning with a broken heart, broken spirit, but she found that the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken hearted. That is priceless. Because the tomb is empty. Stand with me if you would. Because the tomb is empty, my joy is full this morning. And it ain't Easter Sunday morning, but it don't have to be Easter Sunday morning. Because the tomb is empty still now. It ain't just empty one day a year, you know. It's empty all the time. Hear me now. Because the tomb is empty, my joy is full. You see, death couldn't hold him. Uh, the, the lies couldn't cover it up. And he got up. In hopelessness and finality in the cemetery, he got up. On resurrection Sunday morning, Jesus got up. Jesus was as dead as anybody I've ever seen. I'll stake my reputation on it. Jesus was dead, but he got up. Early Sunday morning, before the morning sun well, it even began to, to, to yawn, listen to me, he got up. He got up. And you know what that is? That's priceless this morning. And he had all power in his hands. That's priceless this morning. Understand, I heard him say, and if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, not one, not two, not just rich men, not just smart men, not just famous men, not just black men, not just white men. Matter of fact, not even just men. All men and women, I will draw them unto me. As I close this morning, I want you to know he got up. And when he got up, he lifted me up. You see, I was sinking deep in sin. Remember the old song? Far from the peaceful shore. 
And I ain't the only one today. You see, this is our story. We were very deeply stained within and seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard our despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me. And now safe am I. Anybody here been lifted this morning? Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's priceless today. Because I know he holds the future. That's priceless. And life is worth the living just because he lives. That is priceless. If you hear, if you hear that I died tonight, when you bury me, stick a sign in the ground that says temporary residence. Because I'm coming back. You can count on that. And that's priceless. Hear me today. Get this now. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question. Anybody here want? Anybody here want this twenty dollars? Yeah. Lift your hand up if you want this twenty dollars. Got somebody's attention finally. All right. <laughs> now who wants it? <laughs> Smart folks. not just all crumpled and messed up dreams that didn't turn out right through all that now it's kind of soiled and stained anybody still want it Now it's been torn in two. Started out fresh. Started out strong. Crisp. Well creased. Then life kind of tore it up a little bit. It's kind of got soiled along the way. Some things didn't go the way they wanted to. Been through some heart. Been through some pain. Got in the dirt a little bit when they shouldn't have. It all ended up just tearing them apart. Thankful today that we're not alone. Janice, come here. Jen's brother just passed away. Got a lot going on. That one's been through a lot, some problems, but he's got some friends. We're praying for you, dear. Let me tell you something today. You may be beat up, crumpled up, torn in half, but let me tell you today, you are priceless to people that love you. People that don't love you, you can be fresh and crisp and they still don't love you. When are you going to quit worrying about the people that don't love you? They didn't love you when you're looking good. Matter of fact, they probably didn't like you because you look so good. But you could be dirty and you could be filthy and you could be torn apart. And people that love you still love you. And can I tell you? If you're down, he'll lift you up. If you've been left for dead, he'll, he'll speak. Lazarus, come forth. This morning, that old song, Gaither's song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That's why you better not leave Easter back at March 31st. You better not leave it there. 
See, because he lives, he's the only reason I can face April 14th. The only way I can face tomorrow, April 15th, is because he lives. I got news for you. It's, it's Christmas every day. It's Easter every day in my life. You can't separate them. Today is my daughter Jonelle's birthday. <laughs> every day is their birthday. I'm concerned. <laughs> April 14th. I don't give a flop about that. Listen to me. It's my baby every day. Every day, I don't have to have a reason. I don't have to have a reason. I don't, have, I don't need a reason. Can I tell you today, you may be dirty and crumpled and left and stomped. And not only look in Mary's eyes, but look through Mary's eyes today. And I'm telling you, when you find yourself lost in a tomb and you don't know where it is and you're around strangers that you don't recognize listen close he's going to say Frank he's going to say Pam she turned before she's asking where is he where have you laid him I don't know who you are and immediately he says Mary she says Ramona teacher this morning there's some of you here today and you feel like that $20 bill has been started out pretty good, but you've been beaten, beaten down and soiled and, and just not, things haven't turned out the way you thought they were going to go. But you know what he sees when he sees you? Priceless. Priceless. And don't, and don't let the devil ever ever control the narrative in your life. Don't ever let that happen. When you're saying, I ain't nothing, I'm no good, I've been torn and ripped apart, I ain't no good, I ain't no good, the devil's going, that's it, that's what I want you to have, that's what I want you to say, keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying that right there. When you're saying that, you might think, well, God's, he's compassionate, no, no, you're making God mad. He gave his son for you. Don't you say you're nothing. If he gave, can I tell you again? I, I love everybody here. You know what I'm going to say. I love everybody here, but I don't love none of you enough to let one of my daughters die for you. Sorry. Judge me all you want to. You wouldn't let one of your kids die for me, and you know you wouldn't. You know why? Because we don't have the capacity to love like that. You, you wouldn't let Steve die for me. I know you love me, but you wouldn't do it. You, you, you don't have the ability to do that. But if, if you had the ability and he died for me, and then you hear me whining and complaining, I ain't nothing, I ain't no, I ain't nothing. You go, you shut your mouth. I gave my son for you. That's priceless. Understand today. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you look. I don't care what anybody else says about you. Think of, I don't care any of that at all. You're priceless to him. And he's here this morning to lift you up, to step in. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Nobody walk out of this sanctuary for a moment unless it's an emergency, unless you're sick. Don't anybody leave for the next few moments. If you're here this morning and you feel just like that $20 bill that's been crumpled and stepped on and soiled and torn apart, I don't want you to wait. I don't want you to hesitate. You're just being honest this morning. You're not whining. You're not complaining. You're just saying like Mary. Lost. I'm hurting. I don't care if this is your first time here. I don't care if you've been coming from the beginning of the church. I don't care what the color of your skin. I don't care how old you are. I don't color, care anything about your education or lack of it. I just want you to get out to your seat and come right now. If you've been soiled, if you've been torn apart, if you've been crumpled, if you feel like that, that $20 bill is just, but listen to me. 
you have as much value today as you did before any attack of the enemy came in your life. I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come now. Come quickly. Come quickly. You don't have to explain it to anybody. We couldn't explain it if you wanted to. You don't have to try to tell anybody about it. Just come right now and just say, where have you laid him? By coming down here, you're just saying, Pastor, where, where is he? This morning, let me tell you what's going to happen. He's about to call your name. He's about to speak into that empty tomb right now and say, Bobby. He's about to say, William. He's about to say, Amanda. He's about to speak your name right now. You know why? I don't know why everything happens like it did, but I got news for you. Jesus knew what Mary had been through. He knew where she would be without him. And it's not by accident that she was the one in the empty tomb. And it's not by accident that he didn't just have the angels there. It's not by accident that he was there and said, Mary. He said he would never leave us and never forsake us. And that meant for Mary. And that meant it for you that are down here right now. And he's calling your name. He's saying, Diana, Matthew, calling your name. And just like that $20 bill that had a few friends with it, I want some of you at your seat to come down here right now. And I want you to gather around these folks. And we're just going to love on them. We're going to pray for them right now. Come on. Come on right now. Just come down as the Lord leads you. Begin to lay hands on them and pray for them right now. Come on. I need the bridge folks to look down here right now. Come on. I need all the lay pastors, if you would, to look down here. Make sure you're here. I need you down here praying for people. Don't let anybody be by themselves. There's not going to be a formal benediction. There's not going to be a formal dismissal. I just want you to come right now. These altars are open. If you haven't come, it's still time. Come on. There's still time. Come right now. Come on down. Father, we begin right now to pray one for another, Lord. Father, we pray for these that feel like they've been beaten up, Lord. The devil's taken a, a, quite a toll on them. But, Lord, they're still priceless in your eyes. They're priceless. They're not just okay going to make it. They're priceless today. Beyond terms of, uh, of value. Beyond the understanding of what money could do, Lord. It's priceless today. The value that you put upon them now, Lord. Lord, I pray for Becky, Lord. I pray for Bryce today, Lord God. I pray for this, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. a the shadows can't deny, your name cannot be overcome, oh, is a life forever lifted high, your name cannot be overcome. darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you sigh 
hands fear, oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, your name is light, you never Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Forever lifted high. 
silence fear Jesus 